Okay, let's get straight on with this. We want to indicate some paving kind of pattern on the uh, roadway here. And then for the footpath, I want to show something a bit more loose, a bit a bit kind of rougher. So what have we got in the way of layers? There's nothing we can use in here. So let's create a couple of layers for this. We could probably put these on the same layer, but I maybe set s separate them off just to get a bit more control. So let's have we're starting the layers with psi, so they they're all related to the site. Psi hatch road. So psi hatch road. I'm going to use a brown color for this. So I'm going to choose color 35. I'll make a second layer, which will be Psi hatch gravel. And this one I'm going to make just fairly light gray, so maybe color 254. Okay, and I probably should use a polyline to help me with this. Now we've got a polyline layer we could use here. Um, we could use that one again. It's going to be frozen off in the end anyway, so we may as well actually just reuse it. So I'm going to freeze, unfr unfreeze that, and make it current, and this will hold our hatching later on. Okay, it's overlapping here, but it shouldn't throw you off too much. So let's do the road first, and this introduces a way of tracing around polylines that are curved. So the command is PL return. I'll start here looking for changes of direction. So when I get to here, I've actually got a piece of an arc. So I can't just go to the end point because it'll leave a slither unhatched or hatching where it shouldn't be. So I ta type in the letter A so it forces in an arc. Now because we had a straight line section to start and that this was filleted with an arc, then it's going to match exactly. So I can just go straight to the end point. Notice my curve sits exactly on top of the one that's already there. Now I can't stay with arc, I need to change back to line now. So L, return. Go to the garage door, to the other side, then here, and then it's back to arc. So it's A, return. Come round the corner and look for the end of the arc. Then line again, so it's L, return. And we've got three line segments. Now we've got two arc segments, one going this way and one going slightly that way. So A return, and because it was all done with fillets, it traces easily. Now back to line for the final two segments, L return, here, and then the letter C and return. Closes the shape. That's ready to take its hatch pattern. We'll do this one first and then move on to the next one. So we use the hatch, so H A T C H. I want to use a predefined pattern, but I don't want to use solid. What I want to use is called A R H bone. It's a herringbone paving pattern. Scale for the pattern, two. There's too much going on angle-wise to change it. We'd basically probably have a tidy pattern in this area and then whatever happens out to the road. So don't change the angle on this one. So I pick Select Objects, click on my shape, Return, Preview the shape. Hatching looks OK. Happy with that, press Return. Now put that pattern onto layer Psi Hatch Road. Should go brown. Right. I'm going to do something slightly different with this path. I want the hatching to be a bit more hit and miss, a bit more random. So I'm going to turn off the O-snaps this time. I don't want to actually pick up on anything. And I'm going to do a kind of a, a jagged kind of line inside the path. So the idea here is that you you're trying to make it as random as possible. 
and try and stay inside the yellow line so that our material stays on the path. But the crucial thing here is to not overlap yourself. If you do, the hatch may fail. Okay, we're moving fairly fast. It doesn't have to be small steps. It can be big sweeping jumps. We're just trying to get around the shape reasonably quickly, but with a bit of randomness. Just made that. I can correct that later on. I can move a vertex, but only after I've finished doing the shape. So remember, don't overlap yourself. Trying to make it as random as possible. Remember, this polyline isn't going to be visible, it's only the hatch pattern that's left behind will be visible. So nearly back to the start now. Trying to keep away from anything. And then C, return. And that's going to hold the hatch. Now remember back at the top, I just went over the line slightly. I can take my polyline and just take it in. OK, looks a bit bizarre. You'll see in the print preview that it looks quite interesting once this is done. So we hatch this one again. So H A T C H. I don't want to use A R H bone. What I want to use is A R sand. Now let's try a scale of five. Select objects. Return. Preview. That's a bit small. Uh, they need to be a bit more, a bit more spaced out. So I'm not happy with that. So I press Escape instead. So let's have a scale of eight, and maybe to make things look a bit more random, put in an angle. So let's try an all un horrible angle. Let's use a prime number one. Let's go for 37, and preview. Still maybe a bit tight. Let's make the scale 10. Preview. So that should be better happy with that, press return. Now put that hatch onto layer Psi Hatch Gravel. We can now freeze off the polyline. Let's make layer 0 current before we try that, because you can't freeze your current layer. And so I, sh I freeze Psi Shadow Poly, and then you get the effect of the gravel. So there's no green line, so I've just got a scattering of dots. Kind of what you would do with a pencil, just stippling the path. Let's bring back on the shadows and turn off the walls. Freeze walls. Now, the hatch pattern for the road and the gravel wants to be on top of the shadow. Otherwise, you won't be able to see it. So as long as the shadow is at the back of the drawing, everything should look okay looks even more bizarre now in paper space but if we go sorry it looks more bizarre now in model space if we go to paper space and do a print preview so I go to plot and then preview start to see what's happening now now we've probably got the layers mixed up a wee bit here the pale the, the lighter line should actually be on the path and the stronger line on the road, I would say. So let's just change that. And this is what the CTB is all about. You you change a color, it affects the line weight. So let's just make Psi Path the cyan and make Psi Road the yellow. Now we'll do a print preview. That looks a bit better. Bit of a heavier line. So there's likely to be a curb here. Probably wouldn't be a curb here. Just be a change of surface from from soil to, to gravel. So that looks good. Okay, that's the end of the uh, kind of surfacing hatching exercise.